So hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's session, we are going to learn about how to calculate wind load calculation. Okay, so basically to calculate wind load acting upon any kind of building, the formula given by IS 875 1987 part three is PZ is equals to 0 0.6 BZ square. Okay, so what does PZ means? PZ basically deal with the term that is wind pressure. You can call it as a wind pressure, wind intensity, or wind load, anything, whatever you feel good. Okay, so so basically, now we must know how to calculate this VZ. Okay, so to calculate this VZ, there is again one formula that is VB into K1 into K2 into K3. Okay, so we will learn one by one what is VZ first. Okay, so VZ is nothing but design wind coefficient, you can call it as design wind coefficient okay so design coefficient of wind or wind coefficient whatever the term you feel good you can call it as so the vb is nothing but vb is related to the basic wind speed or basic wind velocity okay basic wind velocity which depends upon the city or in which zone your structure is located in which area your structure is located. Then K1 is a, you can call K1 as a risk coefficient. Okay, we can call it as a risk coefficient. Then K2, we can call it as a terrain height, shortcut height and structure size factor. Okay, on this three factor, your K2 will be depending upon. Okay, so one by one, we are going to learn it in a very detailed manner. How does it depend upon terrain, height, and structure? Structure size factor. Okay, so structure size factor. Structure size factor. Then next is K3. K3 you can call it as a uh, you can call it as a topographical factor. Okay, so we call it as a topographical factor. So once you understood this many terms, now we can move with the next part. That is how to calculate this VZ, uh, sorry, how to calculate this VB, then K1, K2, and K3. So these all terms are given in IS code. So we have to understood all this term based upon IS. First of all, if I want to explain it to you in a very short manner, then I can explain it to you in this way. That is VB is nothing but the basic wind velocity. So basic wind velocity depends upon the type of city or in which city your structure is located basically. If you are in Ahmedabad, the wind factor will be a different one. If you are located in Vishakhapatnam, then it will be a higher wind velocity over there. So it will be a different one. Okay, so if you want to calculate this basic wind speed, okay, or basic wind velocity, you can calculate in that way. Okay, so first of all, we'll go to the IS code to see all these factors, okay, one by one. So here you can see that basic wind speed at 10 meter height uh, for some important cities and towns it is given like Agra or Ahmedabad, like many cities are given, like page numbers are there and based upon which you can calculate this. So like if it is a Kolhapur, if it is, uh, so metropolitan city should be there or your city should be a 
you can say some important city so that based upon which you can take this factor otherwise if you are located in a villages you can consider the city otherwise if you are not in a important city you can consider any city uh, which is nearby to your city or town okay so that's how you can calculate this factor that is basic bin speed which is a very important and which is very easy to calculate okay so now next we need to learn something about k1 factor okay so here you can see that K1 factor, which is very easy to understand, that is it depends upon only two factors, that is class of structure and the design period of that particular structure, for how much lifespan it is designed. So first of all, whether your structure is an important one or uh, it is designed for the greater period of time, you can learn it from here. That is class of structure, all general building and structure like your residential buildings, which are, uh, you can say designed for the 50 years lifespan. So you can take and factor. And another one is you must know the wind speed in your city as well, because it will be div divided into six parts only. So if you have calculated uh, wind speed for Pune, or if you have calculated wind speed for Nashik, that's how you will get that value. Then again, you know the lifespan of your building and you know the class of your structure. Then interpolating all these values, you will get one value already. For this first category, there is a value which is equal, like one will be constant. Okay, so if it is a temporary shade, like if it is a steel structure, or you can say if it is your temporary shades, you can take value like depending upon this. Okay, so five will be the years for which we have designed that structure. So based upon which you have to take this. K1, K1 factor. Okay, now buildings and structures presenting a low degree of hazard to life and property or which are designed for 25 years, then you can calculate this. Okay, important buildings and structures such as uh, communication buildings, towers, power, point, power plant, which are designed more than 50 years, like up to 100 years, you have to consider this category. Okay, so basic wind speed will remain constant because your city is not going to vary. Your city will be same throughout. Only the thing which is going to change is class of structure. And based upon class of structure, the change will be there in your uh, mean probable life or design life of your structure. That's how we can calculate all these terms, okay? So this was about K1 factor, which was very easier to understand. Now will we we will move towards the second factor that is K2 factor. So here you can see that IS 875 part three has given table two for K2 factor. Okay, so K2 factor is nothing but to obtain the factor based upon three uh, important uh, classifications. Like first of all, we need to know the size of structure, whether it may be your length, width and height of the structure, which is which will be overall, overall structural size. It means length, width and height, you must know it. And from across which you have to consider whichever is the maximum. If it is your length, if it is your height, if it is your width, whatever may be the maximum you have to consider in this category. So first of all, if I know, the height of my structure is 50. Okay, so height is cross checked, height is final. Category and class, these two will be decided based upon the obstru uh, obstructions in that area. So, terrain category will be decided based upon in which area your structure is located, like is there any more uh, obstructions? Are there any more obstructions? Or there are few obstructions or there are uh, well scattered obstruction based upon which we are going to finalize the category. So once you will finalize the category of your structure, second is class. Class how we are going to calculate. So class is nothing but uh, whatever the size of your building from which as already I have told you that across which you have to consider the whichever is maximum. Okay, so there is a limit which is given. Uh, so it should be less than 50, it should be um, uh, in between 
30 to 50 likewise there are the values okay so if we, i want to show it to you class of structure because category you can finalize by reading it in the is okay so it is very much easier to understand so based upon category we can calculate this factor but class is also important so two things are related to this means like if you'll calculate the category if you'll calculate the class based upon which you will get the interpolation value for this because height already will, will known to us okay so let's go to learn something about category and class in detail so there are two things which are mainly important that is category and you can say the class first we will uh, learn something about category so you can read here that is exposed open terrain with few or no obstructions and in which the average height of any object surrounding the structure is less than 1.5 if it is your case like if it is the building which is located in such a category then you can consider your category as category number one Second category is open terrain with well scattered obstructions having heights generally between 1.5 to 10. It means your building is of height 3 meter or 6 meter, but the buildings surrounded to your structures are of height like 1.5 to 10 meter. Then you have to consider that your category of the uh, structure or category for the wind load will be category 2. Category three is terrain with numerous closely spaced obstructions having the size of building structures up to 10 meter in height with or without few isolated tall structures. Okay, so likewise, there are the categories. So you can easily identify in which category your structures will be. Okay, so we can easily calculate it. So now we'll move towards the class of structure, how we can calculate it. So here we can calculate the class of structure, okay? So class A, class B, and class C. How we can categorize uh, based upon class? So first of all, we need to understand how much is the uh, width of your building, height of your building, and length of your building, okay? So you can see that class A is been categorized as structure or their components, such as cladding, glazing, roofing, etc having maximum dimension greatest horizontal or vertical dimension less than 20 meter if we will consider that the length of our building is 20 meter height of our building is 40 meter and width of our building is 30 meter 20 30 40 respectively so whichever is the maximum that you have to consider for this comparison okay so 40 is maximum so 40 is greater than 20 that's why we do not fall in this category. That is class A is not our class, okay? So second category, like you can see the class B, structures and their components, okay? So you can see that in short, we can learn greatest horizontal or vertical dimension between 20 and 50. Your dimension will fit in this category because 40 is in between 20 and 50. So that's why we fall in class B. Okay, so if your dimension is greater than 40, okay, or greater than 50, that time you have to consider class C. Here how we can calculate the class of your structure. Okay, now let's go to the formula again. So once you will fit all these formulas, or sorry, once you will calculate all these values, so by putting all these values in the formula, you will get the term that is pz which is basic wind uh, sorry which is your wind pressure okay which is the final outcome we can say okay so i hope in today's session we have learned some good thing or you guys got some good knowledge from my side that is how to calculate the wind load in coming session we will learn many more things related to the calculation of load and many more okay so if you like my video then please like and subscribe my channel thank you guys